a little bit about everything yeah okay so we are with stanley williams and we are talking about club life uh fast future uh, of club life mm -hmm. and uh, stanley please tell us what uh, should we are waiting for in this industry uh, what way well, well in the summer season as you know if you've seen there's a lot of little mini festivals that's going on people are going out to those especially because the weather is beautiful of course you have like the alpha uh, future people you have the sensation white but there are also a lot of other small ones that people like to go to um, for the winter we I'm looking at a lot of we call them multi project clubs in which you'll be finding music art fashion and music all in one space this is what we're hoping for anyway um, there's no more big dance floors from what I see in Moscow anymore. So big clubs will die? They will die. They will uh -huh. die. The big clubs will... How many big clubs for Moscow will be fine? Two, like space and... I would say for example. Space, is, space will be one, but um, space will be one big club. But that's more, that's more of what I'm saying. Like a little, that's a really mini festival inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not an open air. Mm -hmm. It's going to be these places where they have many little festivals like that. You will have um, a space where you are uh, bringing in uh, many artists and DJs to play in one little space in the winter time too. And the reason for that, because it's it's cheaper to, to book a lot of acts, mm -hmm. a lot of small acts, a lot of small uh, acts for a festival than just get one act to, and everyone will depend on that act. With with five good, ten good DJs, you're guaranteed a show. Because people, you know, one of them, one of the names are going to be attractive to, to a certain clientele. Um, I think for the future, um, we have to just see because right now it's, we're going through a change. But I do think after 2017, the club business is going to explode. Everyone is just going to escape and experience the new things that they've been missing mm -hmm. for the past two years as far as this economic embargo and things like that. Mm -hmm. Things are going to blow up really good. It's going to be the, like a like the 90s again but more sophisticated mm -hmm. <laughs> I think in, in 2017 mm -hmm. so I'm looking good I have a very good outlook on Moscow and I do plan on staying here and being a part of doing these festivals and bringing people in what can you tell us about your uh, first trip to Moscow oh when it was how my, many years ago? wow my first first trip to Moscow was in 1993 I came to do um, a, a, a tour uh, for a club called Metellitsa and they, uh, they, they gave me a casino. Club there was casino, a casino. Yeah. Wow. But at that time, of course, there were so many casinos here. And this casino wanted me to um, open up the nightclub and bring people in for a while. I just said I'll stay a month to, to bring people in every week. And um, I met a lot of good DJs that are, some of them are still playing today. Um, Alexander Smell, we worked together. Um, oh, many people. Anyway, um, it was different for me because there was really different types of people. There were the people who would dance to like the really pop clubs, and then you had the techno clubs. At that time in 93, it was pure techno. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Only later, back when, um, uh, what is of, uh, uh, what is Garobi? When he came in, the music started getting a little funky and elite with the club Titanic and all of that. Mm -hmm. That's when I remember that part. That's when I said, I was going to leave Moscow, then I'll come back again. Um, but these places were, um, was very strange for me because at the time I didn't really know the language, but I just knew by just feel, feeling the energy of the different people. And it was really, really good. I must say it was very good. Mm -hmm. What projects in Moscow you, know, you like more? I mean, uh, not our time, but Back for then? example, 10 years ago, yeah. Oh, well, you see, there were projects, there were really uh, cool projects. The first project I liked, like many years ago when I first came here, was the Hermitage Project. Mm -hmm. The Hermitage Club was something that was really, really interesting because at that time, it was spawning of a new type of music. Remember I was telling you that it was just techno and, and, and just pop, mm -hmm. like the strata pop. At this time, 
there were a lot of underground artists coming up. There was rap coming in. Rap was first being introduced to Russia. This is uh, rap, uh, pure alternative rock, like groups like Tavas Samalot, Nogus, Nogus Malola, you see, if I said that right. Um, the, all of these people uh, were, were, were blossoming. The, the, the Night Wolves, uh, the Night Wolves motorcycle, uh, motorcycle team. These, these, these bikers, they're all in one space mm -hmm. and, and they exploded to the scene that today you still have that brought you, that, that still they give you this good rock and roll scene, this good alternative scene like um, that's happening all over Moscow now. Um, one of the other projects that was good that I enjoyed, basically was a club that I did, it was called Buddha Bar. I opened up uh, the first Buddha Bar here in Moscow. But what happened was because of the, 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 at that time you couldn't just say any name because of the, it was a little different back in the 90s and 2000s. The, the, the embassy told me that I can't use the name Buddha because it's a religious name. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, I said, well, okay. So we had to change the name to Karma Bar. And it would, then we decided to, to move on to the but next But embassy one. of what country told you? Malaysia. Like Malaysia. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Malaysian embassy. Very interesting. They sent a letter to the president uh, to Tom Yeltsin, I guess, I think he was the president, and um, I said that we can't use this name. We don't want them to use this name because they sent it to the mayor, to Lushkov at the time. Mm -hmm. So we had to we had to change the name. And that kind of really uh, changed our business a little bit because everyone was waiting for the Buddha bar because the people who went to Paris, they knew what it was. Mm -hmm. um, so we changed the Karma bar, we lost that uh, clientele that we was really pulling for and we gave it away to someone else um, other projects that I see stop okay Stanley what can you tell us uh, about uh, club legend uh, studio 54 how it was oh how studio... many famous people were there how oh. many people were there at... in general well there were there were famous people coming in there every night um, it was a, it was just a uh, Tell really us names, wonderful names. It was a wonderful Before experience. It okay, it was a wonderful experience um, uh, for me, and it was the first time that I ever got a chance to play for celebrities. Yeah, people like Eddie Murphy, Robert De Niro, uh, Bianca Jagger, nice. um, uh, Madonna. All these people were coming in and out of the clubs. So every week, everyone wanted to have their birthday party there or something, and. I was fortunate enough to play on a Friday night. For some reason, they all like to have their birthday party on a Friday night to celebrate. Mm -hmm. And it was wonderful. So that was my night, Friday nights at Studio 54. Um, but then uh, there was a time when the summertime came. A lot of people don't know this, but um, I do have the documents to prove it. There was another Studio 54 at the same time. There was another in New York. Studio. Yes, in New York. There was not in New York. This was the Studio 54 for the jet setters because there was a lot of jet setters there. Mm -hmm. So in the summertime, the jet setters weren't hanging in New York. So they would all go down to the Studio 54 in the Virgin Islands, the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So there was another small Studio 54 that would, that you can go, you can go there and hang out and dance, and then from there you can go straight to your yacht and mm -hmm. keep going. Mm -hmm. So. It was one of those where I was invited to play down there. And I love that too. I stayed there for six months. So coming back to New York, the scene, the club scene had changed a lot. Studio 54 was uh, had its time. And then there was other big clubs that was called like Area, Limelight. And all these clubs were for all how the... how many people, for example, Area? Area was how about 500, inside? 600 people. That's uh -huh. big for a New York club. For, for five to 600 people. Even back then, there weren't big clubs like 3,000, 2,000, there were just one or two, one. Mm -hmm. But back then, to have 500 people in your club uh, at one time, uh, that was something that was really good. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing about New York City clubs, they were packed, they were packed not on, on Wednesday nights, you would get five to 600 people. In the middle of, in the, middle middle of the, the week. In the week. Yeah, yes. middle of the week, You would get that kind of clientele. So all the cool people like to play on the weekdays, mm -hmm. and we, we always said Friday and Saturdays are for the tourists. So, but uh, what about atmosphere? What about parties? Oh, the parties were what great. About show. Oh well, the parties were show. The shows were great. 
um, I remember one show um, where I played for Grace Jones and she would come and she had a birthday party. We had a birthday and she would come in riding in on a motorcycle inside the club mm -hmm. and everybody's just jumping out the way. But that was her interest she wanted to do. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. same as like Studio 54 that was a little before my time uh, when Bianca Jagger came in on a white horse. So, <laughs> so, so Grace wanted to do it too in the later time, but it was on a motorcycle. <laughs> It was great. So show was not not only in the stage, but no, it was just from the west the, to yes. The show was not only in the every stage, corner. It was in club. every corner. So you were there were also displays like the club area. They would have displays in which you would thought you were in a museum, in which they would have a live a live artist there painting someone mm -hmm. as you passing there. I see. So. Um, you will have someone painting, you will have some sculpture, doing a sculpture while the club is still going on. Mm -hmm. So, you would think that uh, you're inside of an art gallery working. Mm -hmm. And that's, believe it or not, that's where I met uh, famous artists. Actually, I did a work with them, helped them one time, with uh, Andy Warhol, mm -hmm. Jean-Michel Basquiat, and mm -hmm. Keith Haring. Worked with all three of them. But at that time, I didn't know they were, uh, I wasn't into the art scene then. Mm -hmm. And only until later I found out that I was working with some of the most talented, brilliant geniuses in the world. I didn't realize that. I was I was young. I was 23 years old after that time. So um, the atmosphere was really good. The most important thing was the owner or the or the or the manager who was ever running the place had to have his personal touch there. You cannot say if I want this club this way. You cannot expect somebody else to be to have the same feeling for you, mm -hmm. no matter who it is. So if you want a club as an owner, if you want a club that way, it's good for you to be out there at face control yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to. This is what this is what's the secret. This is the secret of Steve Rebell. But face control was very strong, yeah? Very strong, very strong. But it was diverse. Diverse meaning it was many different type of people. Mm -hmm. You might like, um, if you ever seen the film from 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 the film studio 54, mm -hmm. you might had a a, 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 a a guy who worked, who looked good, who liked to dress, felt good. Uh, he was from who, a guy who was probably a shop a shop salesman in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the clothing store in New Jersey. And then Steve Bell would invite the president of of mm -hmm. of, 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 of Burundi <laughs> to come in. So the people were very mixed, and, and that was the secret of New York because all of the clubs. It wasn't about face control. It, it, the face control is something that I've, to be honest, I've only heard this in Russia. But what we looked at was character. If you was there, if you was there, and you was just standing there, and you can be patient. Oh, right here. This is where I'm at. If you can be patient mm -hmm. with the with the with the with the doorman, they will let you in. Mm -hmm. But if you start saying, "Oh, la, la, why you don't?" <laughs> no, no, you're not in. So that's how they judge the character. It's more of character control. We want to pause. Sorry, we're gonna keep going. No, let's go there. Okay, let's keep going then. Okay. Yeah. So, so the people, the people was. Um, were, were, By the way, so well. many famous people were there, and for me, like for a developer, very interesting. What about their bills? How many, how much money they spend in the clubs? I mean, <laughs> these superstars. Well, you because know, in Russia, usually, uh, if you invite superstar in the club, you need to pay for it. At least you need to pay for it, mm -hmm. and you make a, you need to make a table. You, you need to pay their bills. Uh -huh. that. What about in, in America? How 54? it was like? It wasn't How that way at all. There? In Studio 54, people would pay their own bills. Mm -hmm. That was a good thing. People, you was a friend of Steve, but you still have to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it, in, in these, because these people were friends of Steve, they didn't see the difference between a celebrity in uh, uh, here and a celebrity at the time in America. You, the celebrity wanted to be there more than, <laughs> wanted to be in the club more than the owner would. Mm -hmm. And this is the key. See, you 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 have a celebrity say, "Oh, we want to bring you in. Come on, we'll pay." No, 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 no. The celebrity, if you want to come in our club, this is how you if you want to be in our club. This is where you should be. And this is the same as like uh, the hot spots that are going on now 
in New York and California where all the celebrities like to come and hang out and look.